Caitlin Marie Jenner is an American media personality, socialite, political candidate and retired Olympic gold medal winning decathlete. Jenner played college football for the Graceland Yellow Jackets before incurring a knee injury that required surgery. Convinced by Olympic decathlete Jack Parker's coach, L. D. Weldon, to try the decathlon, Jenner had a six-year decathlon career, culminating in winning the men's decathlon event at the 1976 Summer Olympics in Montreal, setting a third successive world record and gaining fame as an all-American hero. Given the unofficial title of world's greatest athlete, Jenner established a career in television, film, writing, auto racing, business, and as a Playgirl cover model. Jenner has six children with three successive wives, Christy Crownover, Linda Thompson, and Chris Jenner, and has since 2007 appeared on the reality television series Keeping Up with the Kardashians with Chris, their daughters Kendall and Kylie Jenner, and Chris's other children Courtney, Kim, Chloe, and Rob Kardashian. Assigned male at birth, Jenner publicly came out as a trans woman in April 2015, announcing her new name in July. From 2015 to 2016, she starred in the reality television series I Am Kate, which focused on her gender transition. She has been called the most famous transgender woman in the world. Jenna is a transgender rights activist, her views on transgender issues have been criticized by other trans and LGBTQ plus activists. A member of the Republican Party, she is running for governor of California in the 2021 California gubernatorial recall election. Chapter 1 Early Life Caitlin Marie Jenner was born William Bruce Jenner on October 28, 1949, in Mount Kisco, New York. She was known as Bruce Jenner until June 2015. Her parents are Esther Ruth and William Hugh Jenner, who was an arborist. She is of English, Scottish, Irish, Dutch, and Welsh descent. Her younger brother, Bert, was killed in a car accident in Canton, Connecticut, on November 30, 1976, shortly after Jenner's success at the Olympic Games. As a young child, Jenna was diagnosed with dyslexia. Jenna attended Sleepy Hollow High School in Sleepy Hollow, New York, for her freshman and sophomore years and Newtown High School in Newtown, Connecticut, for her junior and senior years, graduating in 1968. Jenna earned a football scholarship and attended Graceland College in Lamoni, Iowa, but was forced to stop playing football because of a knee injury. Recognizing Jenna's potential, Graceland track coach L.D. Weldon encouraged Jenna to switch to the decathlon. Jenna debuted as a decathlete in 1970 in the Drake Relays Decathlon in Des Moines, Iowa, finishing in fifth place. Jenna graduated from Graceland College in 1973 with a degree in physical education. Chapter 2 – Decathlon Career Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Early Career at the 1972 U.S. Olympic Trials in Eugene, Oregon, Jenna was in fifth place in the men's decathlon, behind Steve Goff and Andrew Petz with one event remaining. Needing to make up a 19-second gap on Goff in the 1,500 meters, Jenna qualified for the Olympic team by finishing in first place 22 seconds ahead of the others. This prompted the Eugene Register Guard to ask, who's Jenna? Following the Olympic Trials, Jenna finished in 10th place in the decathlon at the 1972 Summer Olympics in Munich. By watching Soviet Mikola Avilov win the event, Jenna was inspired to start an intense training regimen. For the first time, I knew what I wanted out of life and that was it, and this guy has it. I literally started training that night at midnight, running through the streets of Munich, Germany, training for the Games. I trained that day on through the 1976 games, 6 to 8 hours a day, every day, 365 days a year. After graduating from Graceland, Jenna married girlfriend Christy Crownover and moved to San Jose, California. Crownover provided most of the family income as a flight attendant for United Airlines. Jenna trained during the day and sold insurance at night, earning 9,000 US dollars a year. In the era before professional American athletes were allowed to compete in Olympic sports, 
this kind of training was unheard of. On the other hand, Soviet athletes were state-sponsored, which gave them an advantage over amateur American athletes. During this period, Jenner trained at the San Jose City College and San Jose State University tracks. San Jose Athletics centered on SJCC coach Bert Bonanno, at that time, the city was a hotbed for training, and was called the track capital of the world. Many other aspiring Olympic athletes also trained at San Jose, the list included Millard Hampton, Andre Phillips, John Powell, Mac Wilkins, and Al Feuerbach. Jenner's best events were on day two of the decathlon, hurdles, discus, pole vault, javelin and 1,500 meters. Chapter 2 Section 2 Olympic success. Jenner was the American champion in the men's decathlon event in 1974, and was featured on the cover of Track and Field News magazine's August 1974 issue. While on tour in 1975, Jenner won the French national championship, and a gold medal at the 1975 Pan American Games, setting the tournament record with 8,045 points. This was followed by world records of 8,524 points at the USA-USSR Poland Triangular Meet in Eugene, Oregon, on August 9-10, 1975, breaking Avalov's record, and 8,538 points at the 1976 Olympic Trials, also in Eugene. The second Eugene record, was a hybrid score because of a timing system failure and it was wind-aided. Still, Jenna was proud of a nice little workout, ha. Huh? We got what we wanted. We scared the hell out of everybody in the world only a month away from the games. Of the 13 decathlons Jenna competed in between 1973 and 1976, the only loss was at the 1975 AAU National Championships, when a miss in the pole vault marred the score. At the 1976 Olympic Games in Montreal, Jenner achieved personal bests in all five events on the first day of the men's decathlon, a home run, despite being in second place behind Guido Kratzmer of West Germany. Jenner was confident, the second day has all my good events. If everything works out all right, we should be ahead after it's all over. Following a rainstorm on the second day, Jenner watched teammate Fred Dixon get injured in the 110-meter hurdles, and so adopted a cautious approach to the hurdles and discus, then had personal bests in the pole vault, when Jenner took the lead, and javelin. At that point, victory was virtually assured, but it remained to be seen by how much Jenner would improve the record. In the final event, the 1,500 meters, which was seen live on national television, Jenna looked content to finish the long competition. Jenna sprinted the last lap, making up a 50-meter deficit and nearly catching the event favorite, Soviet Leonid Litvinenko, who was already well out of contention for the gold medal, but whose personal best had been 8 seconds better than Jenna's personal best before the race. Jenna set a new personal best time and won the gold medal with a world record score of 8,618 points. Olympic world record performance. Chapter 2 Section 3 Impact After the event, Jenna took an American flag from a spectator and carried it during the victory lap, starting a tradition that is now common among winning athletes. Abandoning vaulting poles in the stadium, with no intention of ever competing again, Jenna stated that, in 1972, I made the decision that I would go four years and totally dedicate myself to what I was doing, and then I would move on after it was over with. I went into that competition knowing that would be the last time I would ever do this. Jenna explained, it hurts every day when you practice hard. Plus, when this decathlon is over, I got the rest of my life to recuperate. Who cares how bad it hurts? Jenna became a national hero and received the James E. Sullivan Award as the top amateur athlete in the United States. Jenner was named the Associated Press Male Athlete of the Year in 1976. Jenner's 1976 world and Olympic record was broken by four points by Daley Thompson at the 1980 Olympics in Moscow. Thompson's victory was perhaps tainted by the U.S. led boycott of the Moscow Olympics in protest of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, though the top American, Bobby Kaufman, 
was not expected to push Thompson or challenge Jenner's record. In 1985, Jenner's Olympic decathlon score was re-evaluated against the IAF's updated decathlon scoring table and was reported as 8,634 for comparative purposes. This converted mark stood as the American record until 1991, when it was surpassed by eventual gold medalist, and world record holder, Dan O'Brien of Dan and Dave fame. As of 2018, Jenner was ranked 26th on the world all-time list and 9th on the American all-time list. Jenner was inducted into the United States National Track and Field Hall of Fame in 1980, the Olympic Hall of Fame in 1986, the Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame and the Connecticut Sports Hall of Fame in 1994, and the San Jose Sports Hall of Fame in 2010. For almost 20 years, San Jose City College hosted an annual Bruce Jenner Invitational Competition. Chapter 2 Section 4, International Competitions Chapter 2 Section 5, National Events 1972 United States Olympic Trials 1973 USA Outdoor Track and Field Championships, 5th 1974 USA Outdoor Track and Field Championships 1975 French Athletics Championships 1976 USA Outdoor Track and Field Championships 1976 United States Olympic Trials Chapter 2 Section 6 Personal Records All Information from IAF 100 Meters 10.94 s 400 meters 47.51 s 1500 meters 4 12.61 minutes second 110 meters hurdles 14.84 s high jump 2.03 meters pole vault 4.80 meters long jump 7.22 meters. Shot put, 15.35 meters. Discus throw, 50.04 meters. Javelin throw, 68.52 meters. Decathlon, 8,634 pints. Chapter 3, Post-Olympic Career. Chapter 3, Section 1, Capitalizing on Olympic Fame. In the 1970s, Olympic athletes were considered to be amateurs and were not allowed to seek or accept payment for their positions as sports celebrities. During the Cold War in 1972, three major Olympic titles that had a long history of American success, basketball, the 100-meter dash, and decathlon, were won by Soviet athletes. All Soviet athletes were professionals, while the United States was limited to amateurs. Jenner became an American hero by returning the decathlon title to the United States. After the games were over, Jenner said, I happened to be the right guy, at that right place, at that right time. Tony Kornheiser of the New York Times wrote, Jenner is twirling the nation like a baton. He and wife, Christie, are so high up on the pedestal of American heroism, it would take a crane to get them down. After the expected Olympic success, Jenner planned to cash in on whatever celebrity status could follow a gold medal in the same mold as Johnny Weissmuller and Sonia Henney, who had become major movie stars following their gold medals. This would require foregoing any future Olympic competition. At the time, Jenner's agent George Wallach felt there was a four-year window, until the next Olympics, upon which to capitalize. Wallach reported that Jenner was being considered for the role of Superman, which ultimately went to Christopher Reeve. I really don't know how many offers we have, Wallach claimed. There are still unopened telegrams back at the hotel and you just can't believe the offers that poured in during the first two days. Jenner appeared on the cover of the August 9, 1976, issue of Sports Illustrated, the February 1979 issue of Gentleman's Quarterly, and on the cover of Playgirl magazine. Jenner became a spokesperson for Tropicana, Minolta, and Buster Brown Shoes. 
Jenna was also selected by the Kansas City Kings with the 139th overall pick in the seventh round of the 1977 NBA draft despite not having played basketball since high school. The publicity stunt was executed by team president-slash-general manager Joe Axelson to mock the Kansas City Chiefs' yearly claims that they planned on selecting the best athlete available in the National Football League draft. Jenner was presented with a jersey customized with the number 8618, the Olympic gold medal winning score, but would never appear as an active player with the Kings. Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 2 Wheaties Spokesperson In 1977, Jenner became a spokesperson for Wheaties brand breakfast cereal, and appeared in a photograph on the cover of the cereal box. After taking over from Olympic champion Bob Richards, Jenner was second in a succession of athletes featured as spokespersons for the brand. Mary Lou Retton succeeded Jenner in 1984. On November 22, 1977, Jenner went to San Francisco to refute charges filed by San Francisco District Attorney Joseph Freitas that General Mills, the maker of Wheaties, had engaged in deceptive advertising in its campaign that featured Jenner. Jenner liked Wheaties and ate the breakfast cereal two or three times a week, which supported the advertising campaign's claims. Two days later, Freitas withdrew the suit, saying that it was a case of overzealousness on the part of his staff. When Jenner came out as a trans woman in 2015, General Mills stated that, Bruce Jenner continues to be a respected member of Team Wheaties. After a negative response to this initial statement, Mike Siemianas, General Mills's brand media relations manager, clarified it by saying, Bruce Jenner has been a respected member of Team Wheaties, and Caitlyn Jenner will continue to be. Chapter 3 Section 2 – Television and Film Career Jenner began television appearances in the mid-1970s, both as herself, and in character roles. One of Jenner's first recurring television roles was as a co-host of the short-lived daytime talk and variety series America Live. In 1978, The Comedy Can't Stop the Music was Jenner's first film appearance. She starred in the made-for-TV movies The Golden Moment, An Olympic Love Story and Grambling's White Tiger. During the 1981-1982 season, Jenner became a semi-regular cast member in the police series GPS, guest starring as Officer Steve McLeish for six episodes, substituting for star Eric Estrada, who was locked in a contract dispute with NBC and MGM. Jenna also appeared in an episode of the sitcom Silver Spoons called Trouble with Words, wherein her personal issues with dyslexia were revealed in a storyline about a recurring teenage character with the same problem. Jenna appeared in the series Learn to Read and in the video games Olympic Decathlon and Bruce Jenner's World Class Decathlon. The hero shot, the finish of the final event of the 1976 Olympic Decathlon, and the Wheaties cover, were parodied by John Belushi on Saturday Night Live, endorsing Little Chocolate Donuts. In 1989, Jenna played herself in the comedy short Dirty Tennis written by James Van Patten. Jenna has appeared in a variety of game shows and reality television programs, including starring with Gritz Gresham in an episode of The American Sportsman. In the early 1990s, Jenna was the host of an infomercial for a stair climbing exercise machine called the Stair Climber Plus. In January 2002, Jenna participated in an episode of the American series The Weakest Link, featuring Olympic athletes. In February and March 2003, Jenna was part of the cast of the American series I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. She made a cameo appearance in a season 3 episode of The Apprentice, which aired in May 2005. She also partnered with Thai Babylonia for skating with celebrities in a series that aired January to March 2006, served as a guest judge on Pet Star on Animal Planet. In November 2010, a photograph of Jenna was shown in a janitor's resume in an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Additional television and talk show appearances by Jenna include Nickelodeon's made for TV film Gym Teacher, the movie, as well as episodes of Murder, she wrote, the Lingo Olympic winners episode, and talk shows such as Hannity in season 1, episode 21 of The Bonnie Hunt Show in 2000, and 8. Since late 2007, 
Jenna has starred in the e-reality series Keeping Up with the Kardashians along with wife Kris Jenna, stepchildren Courtney, Kimberly, Chloe, and Rob Kardashian, and daughters Kylie and Kendall. In 2011, Jenna appeared in the Adam Sandler comedy Jack and Jill in a scene with Al Pacino as an actor in a play. Like Can't Stop the Music, the film won the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Picture and swept every Razzie category. In September 2016, Jenna appeared as herself on the Amazon Prime TV series Transparent in a Dream Sequence during the season 3 episode to Sardines and Back. In November 2019, it was announced that Jenna would be participating in the 19th season of the British version of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. After having previously appeared on the American iteration in 2003, Jenna ultimately placed sixth in the competition. In 2021, Jenna appeared as a contestant on the fifth season of The Masked Singer as the Phoenix. She was the second contestant to be unmasked and the first of Group B. In addition, she also holds the distinction as the show's first transgender contestant. Chapter 3 Section 3 Motorsports Career Jenna had a short career as a race car driver in the IMSA Camel GT series in the 1980s. Jenna's first victory came in the 1986 12 Hours of Sebring in the IMSA GTO class driving the 7-Eleven Roush Racing Ford Mustang with co-driver Scott Pruitt. The pair won their class and finished fourth overall in the 12-hour endurance race. 1986 was also the most successful year of Jenna's career, finishing second in the championship to Pruitt. Jenna commented, I was a lot more badass runner than I was a driver. Jenna also competed in the Toyota Pro slash Celebrity Race at the Grand Prix of Long Beach, winning in 1979 and 1982. The former win came after holding off Alonso, while the latter saw Jenna pass Ted Nugent with two laps remaining. In 1980, Jenna was contacted by NASCAR Winston Cup Series Team DeGuard Motorsports about driving the number 88 car for the 1981 season, although Jenna expressed interest, Ricky Rudd was ultimately hired for the seat. Chapter 3 Section 4 Business Jenna had licensed her previous name for Bruce Jenner's Westwood Centers for Nautilus and Aerobics in the early 1980s to David A. Kirotto, president of other local Nautilus and Aerobics Centers. She had no ownership in the licensed name centers, which were solely owned by Kirotto. Jenner's company, Bruce Jenner Aviation, sells aircraft supplies to executives and corporations. Jenna was the business development vice president for a staffing industry software application known as JennaNet, which was based on Lotus Domino Technology. In March 2016, Jenna announced that she had been chosen as the face of H&M Sport. Later that year, H&M created a six-minute film featuring Jenna, called Caitlyn Jenner's Greatest Victories, A Timeline. Chapter 4, Personal Life Chapter 4 Section 1 marriages. Prior to her public gender transition, Jenna had been married three times, first to Christy Scott from 1972 to 1981. They have two children, son Bert and daughter Cassandra Casey Marino. Jenna Scott's divorce was finalized the first week of January 1981. On January 5, 1981, Jenna married actress Linda Thompson in Hawaii. They have two sons together, Brandon and Brody. By February 1986, Jenna and Thompson had separated and subsequently divorced. Their sons later starred on the reality show The Princes of Malibu, and Brody appeared in the reality show The Hills. On April 21, 1991, Jenna married Chris Kardashian after five months of dating. They have two daughters, Kendall and Kylie. While married, Jenna was also the stepparent to Chris's children from her previous marriage, Courtney, Kim, Chloe and Robert, who star in Keeping Up with the Kardashians. The couple separated in June 2013, but the separation was not publicly announced until four months later, in October. Chris filed for divorce in September 2014, citing irreconcilable differences. Their divorce terms were finalized in December 2014 and went into effect on March 23, 2015, 
as mandated by a state legal requirement for a six months delay after the filing. Chapter 4 Section 2 Fatal Car Collision In February 2015, Jenna was involved in a fatal multiple vehicle collision on the Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu, California. Kim Howe, an animal rights activist and actress, was killed when Jenna's SUV ran into Howe's car. Accounts of the sequence of collisions have varied, as have the number of people injured. Prosecutors declined to file criminal charges, but three civil lawsuits were filed against Jenna by Howe's stepchildren, and drivers of other cars involved in the collision. Jessica Steindorf, a Hollywood agent who was hit by Howe's car, settled her case in December 2015. Howe's stepchildren settled their case in January 2016. Financial details were not disclosed in either case. Chapter 5, Gender Transition Chapter 5 Section 1, Coming Out as a Transgender Woman In a 2020 interview with Diane Sawyer in April 2015, Jenna came out as a trans woman, saying that she had dealt with gender dysphoria since her youth and that, for all intents and purposes, I'm a woman. Jenna cross-dressed for many years and took hormone replacement therapy but stopped after her romance with Kris Kardashian became more serious, leading to marriage in 1991. Jenna recounts having permission to explore her gender identity on her own travels but not when they were coupled, and that not knowing the best way to talk about the many issues contributed to the deterioration of the 23-year-long marriage, which ended formally in 2015. In 2015, Jenna said that she has never been sexually attracted to men, but always to women, and that, keeping in mind the difficulty people have understanding the difference between sexual orientation and gender identity, she would identify as asexual for the time being. Jenna underwent cosmetic surgery, and ultimately completed sex reassignment surgery in January 2017. Chapter 5 Section 2 Media Attention in June 2015, Jenna debuted her new name and image, and began publicly using feminine pronoun self-descriptors. Jenna held a renaming ceremony in July 2015, adopting the name Caitlin Marie Jenna. Prior to her 2020 interview, a two-part special titled Keeping Up With The Kardashians, about Bruce was filmed with the family in which she answered questions, and prepared her children for the personal and public aspects of the transition. In the special, which aired in May 2015, the point was emphasized that there is no one right way to transition. Jenna made it a priority to ensure that all her children were independent first before focusing on her transition. In September 2015, her name was legally changed to Caitlin Marie Jenner and gender to female. Jenner's announcement that she is transgender came at an unprecedented time for trans visibility, including legislative initiatives. The 2020 interview had 20.7 million viewers, making it television's highest ever rated news magazine telecast among adults 18 to 49 and adults 25 to 54. The Daily Beast wrote that Jenna's honesty, vulnerability, and fame may have caused cheap jokes about trans people to seem mean to a mainstream audience on an unprecedented scale. Noting the shift in how comedians treated Jenna's transition, the Daily Beast saw the change as the same evolution that took place in acceptance of LGBT people as a whole when comedians finally crossed the critical threshold from mockery to creativity in their joke telling. Jenna's emerging gender identity was revealed in a Vanity Fair interview written by Buzz Bissinger. Annie Leibovitz photographed the cover, the magazine's first to feature an openly transgender woman, which was captioned Call Me Caitlin. Using her Twitter handle, at Caitlin underscore Jenna, she tweeted, I'm so happy after such a long struggle to be living my true self. Welcome to the world Caitlin. Can't wait for you to get to know her slash me. Time magazine declared this tweet the 10th most retweeted tweet of 2015, based on retweets of tweets by verified users from January 1st to November 10th of that year. Jenna amassed over 1 million Twitter followers in 4 hours and 3 minutes, setting a new Guinness World Record and surpassing United States President Barack Obama, who, a month before, accomplished the same feat in 4 hours and 52 minutes. 
Four days later Jenna was up to 2.37 million followers, with another 1.5 million followers on Instagram. Jenna was also mocked. Beginning in September 2015, she was depicted on the satirical American animated program South Park, which parodied her supporters' political correctness, as well as her driving record. The Jenna-related episodes were stunning and brave, where my country gone. Sponsored content, truth and advertising and PC principal final justice from the show's 19th season. In April 2016 during the Republican presidential primaries, Jenna became an exemplar for candidate Donald Trump's opposition to North Carolina's Public Facilities Privacy and Security Act, with Trump saying that Jenna could use any restroom of her choosing at his Trump Tower property. Jenna soon posted a video showing that she had taken Trump up on his offer. She thanked Trump and assured Trump's adversary Ted Cruz that nobody got molested. In June 2016, Jenna was one of several celebrities depicted using synthetic nude sleeping bodies for the video of Kanye West's song Famous. Later that month, an episode of Epic Rap Battles of History was released featuring Jenna, as Bruce and then Caitlyn, rap, battling against Bruce Banner then the Hulk. Chapter 5 Section 3 Reception Chapter 5 Section 3 Subsection 2 General In August 2015, Jenna won the Social Media Queen Award at the Teen Choice Awards. In October 2015, Glamour magazine named her one of its 25 Glamour Women of the Year, calling her a trans champion. In November 2015, Jenna was listed as one of Entertainment Weekly's 2015 Entertainers of the Year. In December 2015, she was named Barbara Walters' Most Fascinating Person of 2015. Also in that month, she was listed on Time Magazine's 8-person shortlist for the 2015 Person of the Year, and Bing released its list of the year's most searched celebrities, which Jenna was at the top of, and declared Jenna's Vanity Fair cover the second in a list of top celeb moments of 2015. She was the second most searched for person on Google in 2015. In April 2016, she was listed in the Time 100. In June 2016, Jenna became the first openly transgender person to be featured on the cover of Sports Illustrated. The cover and associated story marked the 40th anniversary of her winning the 1976 Summer Olympics decathlon. Pot feminist author Germaine Greer called Glamour magazine's decision to award Jenna with a Woman of the Year award misogynistic, questioning whether a transgender woman could be better than someone who is just born a woman. Jenna also received criticism from individuals such as actress Rose McGowan, for stating, in a BuzzFeed interview, that the hardest part about being a woman is figuring out what to wear. McGowan argued, we are more than deciding what to wear. We are more than the stereotypes foisted upon us by people like you. You're a woman now. Well fucking learn that we have had a very different experience than your life of male privilege. McGowan later stated that she was not transphobic, and added, disliking something a trans person has said is no different, than disliking something a man has said or that a woman has said. Being trans doesn't make one immune from criticism. Chris Mandel of The Independent stated, Jenna has gone on to inspire countless men and women, but her comments, which were made after she was celebrated at Glamour Magazine's Women of the Year in New York were branded offensive and insulting. He added, people began tweeting the other, harder things women have to deal with, such as institutionalized oppression, abuse and sexual assault. James Smith, husband of Moira Smith, the only female New York Police Department officer to die on September 11, 2001, returned Moira's Woman of the Year award, given posthumously. Referring to Jenna as a man, he stated that he found Glamour giving Jenna the same award insulting to Moira's memory, and referred to the matter as a publicity stunt. Smith later said that, Having supported transgender youth and Glamour's decision to honor transgender actress Laverne Cox in 2014, he did not object because Jenna is transgender, he objected to Jenna's hardest part about being a woman commentary, this proved to him that Jenna is not truly a woman. I believe this comment and others he has made trivializes the transgender experience as I have witnessed it. Conversely, 
Adrienne Tam of the Daily Telegraph argued that Jenner deserved the Glamour Award, stating, what McGowan failed to take into consideration was the jesting manner in which Jenner spoke. Tam said. Also immediately followed up her what women wear dilemma with, it's more than that. I'm kind of at this point in my life where I'm trying to figure this womanhood thing out. It is more than hair, makeup, clothes, all that kind of stuff. There's an element here that I'm still kind of searching for. And I think that'll take a while. Because I think as far as gender, we're all on a journey. We're all learning and growing about ourselves. And I feel the same way. Tam considered McGowan's criticism to be over the top, and stated of James Smith's criticism, the salient point here is one about courage. We easily recognize physical courage such as saving orphans from burning buildings, or ordinary people putting their lives in the line of fire. It is far harder to recognize mental courage. She added, without a doubt, the police officer who died in the September 11th attacks was courageous. But so is Jenna? It's a different kind of courage, but it is courage nonetheless. Chapter 5 Section 3 Subsection 3 LGBT Community Since coming out as a trans woman in 2015, Jenna has been called the most famous openly transgender woman in the world. She is also one of the most recognized LGBT people in the world and arguably the most famous LGBT athlete. Jenna said that her visibility was partly to bring attention to gender dysphoria, violence against trans women, and other transgender issues. She also sought to promote more informed discussion of LGBT issues. She signed with Creative Artists Agency's Speakers Department, and will collaborate with the CAA Foundation on a philanthropic strategy focusing on LGBT issues. She made a private appearance at the Los Angeles LGBT Center in June 2015, where she spoke with trans youth. Jenna received the Arthur Ashe Courage Award during the 2015 ESPY Awards in July 2015. ESPN executive producer Maura Mant said Jenna was given the award because she has shown the courage to embrace a truth that had been hidden for years, and to embark on a journey that may not only give comfort to those facing similar circumstances, but can also help to educate people on the challenges that the transgender community faces. She is the third consecutive openly LGBT person to receive the award following footballer Michael Sam and anchorwoman Robin Roberts. In October, Jenna presented the Point Foundation's Horizon Award to television producers Reese Ernst and Zach Ziskowski. This was her second public speaking engagement after her gender transition. In November, Jenna was listed as one of the nine runners up for the Advocates Person of the Year. That month she was also listed as one of the Out 100 of 2015, without calling her the Newsmaker of the Year. On International Human Rights Day, Jenna discussed transgender rights with Samantha Power, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. In 2016, Jenna was on the cover of the Advocates February-March issue. MAC Cosmetics collaborated with Jenna on a lipstick, called Finally Free, which was made available for purchase April 8, 2016 with MAC stating, 100% of the selling price goes to the MAC AIDS Fund Transgender Initiative, to further its work in support of transgender communities. Also in April 2016, Jenna was listed as number 8 on Out Magazine's Power 50 list. In May 2016, her interview with Diane Sawyer in 2015 won Outstanding TV Journalism, News Magazine at the Glad Media Awards. In 2021, Jenna's decision to run for governor of California was met with pushback from many LGBT activists and trans people, with activists criticizing Jenna for her views on transgender issues and support for the Republican Party. Caitlin Burns of Vox said Jenna's politics and controversial existence as a self-professed trans advocate has long put trans Americans in a double bind, forcing them to defend her from transphobic attacks while deploring her political views. This decision became even more controversial following Jenna's opposition to trans girls in girls' sports, with some advocates saying that Jenna did not represent the broader LGBT community. Chapter 5 Section 3 Subsection 4 Show and Memoir Jenna's gender transition is the subject of I Am Kate, 
initially an eight-part TV documentary series, which premiered on the in July 2015 to an audience of 2.7 million viewers. Jenna is an executive producer of the show. The show focuses on Jenna's transition and how it affects her relationships with her family and friends. The show also explores how Jenna adjusts to what she sees as her job as a role model for the transgender community. In October 2015, the show was renewed for a second season, which premiered on March 6, 2016. The show tied for Outstanding Reality Program at the GLAAD Media Awards in 2016. Jenna's memoir, The Secrets of My Life, was published on April 25, 2017. Chapter 5 Section 4, 2021 California Gubernatorial Recall Election In early April 2021, it was reported that Jenna was considering running for governor of California in the 2021 recall gubernatorial election as a Republican. Later in the month on April 23, Jenna announced her run for governor. Joe Kancha of the Hill wrote that Jenna has a chance at becoming the next governor of California because she has name recognition and winning the election requires only getting the most votes, there will not be a runoff election if a candidate does not get at least 50% of the vote. In May 2021, during her run, Jenna stated in an interview with TMZ that trans girls should not be allowed to compete in girls' sports at school, backing Republican Party views on transgender people in sports. Jenna reiterated her views on Twitter the next day, stating that it's an issue of fairness and we need to protect girls' sports in our schools. She has been criticized by many transgender rights advocates who do not see her as an asset to their cause.